Hi, my name is Chuck. I'm a full stack web developer. Uh, in the next 15 minutes, we're going to build a Node.js web application. Start to finish, just the basics, just the simple stuff that you need to get going. Uh, let's get going. Uh, make their message board tutorial. I already have one, so I'm going to call it two. Uh, open it up in my text editor. If you're attempting to follow along, you're going to need um, Node.js installed. If you don't have that installed already, I'll leave a link in the description to instructions on how to do that. I'm going to make an index.js file. And let's go ahead and hello world, just to get a grasp of what's going on. And then we'll open our terminal. We run node index.js, and we get hello world. So the first thing we got to do is we got to get our web server up. We want a hello world on the web. We want to see hello world in the browser instead of our console. So in order to do that, we're going to need a dependency called Express.js. Um, but before we can install Express, we have to initialize our NPM project. So NPM init, we'll go ahead and press enter repeatedly. And that will generate a file called package.json. And then uh, before we install any dependencies, we're going to go ahead and add type module. And that is going to opt us into import and export statements instead of having to use require statements. Uh, don't worry too much about that until later. Uh, but now we can go ahead and npm install express. And you can see it added express as a dependency. So now we can import it. Import express from express const app equals express app.get. So uh, app is just our express instance. App.get is a method that tells our app to listen for a git request. Um, the way that your browser communicates with the server that runs any given website is by sending the website requests and then the website responds with responses. So what our application is going to do is it's going to listen for requests on given paths and we're going to define how it responds to them. So we app.get slash, the first argument to app.get is the path to listen on and slash is just the default path. Uh, and then the second argument is a function. This is a inline anonymous function in JavaScript. We have uh, several arguments to this function, but the two most basic are rec and res, the request object and the response object. We're just going to say res.send hello world. So all this does is it says respond to our request with the string hello world. And then the last little bit of setup we need to do is tell our app to listen for HTTP requests. I'm going to listen on port 8000. And then we're going to log once we are. And semicolons are optional in JavaScript, but we use them at work, so I'm kind of trained to do that. Uh, all right, so listing on localhost 8000. So if I copy this and I paste it into our, oh my goodness, I have too many windows open. Paste it into our web browser, we should get a good old fashioned hello world in the web browser. So once again, we sent a request by implicitly, by simply going to a URL, it sends a get request. And then in our app, we tell it to listen for get requests to slash, and we said send hello world. But what if we want to send, I don't know, something dynamic, something a little different? Well, let's say hello world period, the current time is, and then I'm going to change these single quotes to back ticks, so it's now a template, so I can do that. The current time is new date dot to locale time string. That's how you get the current time in JavaScript. Save the page, stop the code, start the code, go back to the browser and hit refresh. You should say our new string. 
hello world, the current time is 11.13.25 p.m. Now you'll notice it doesn't update automatically. That's because we've only invoked that code on line six once. We refreshed the page, it made a round trip to the browser and displayed the response, and then it never, it didn't go again. So this is not like a live interactive thing running in the browser. This is, all this code we're writing is only running on the server and it only runs when the browser makes a request. Just want to make that clear. There are ways to run code in the browser, of course, uh, but that's out of scope for now. Anyway, how are we doing on time? Nine minutes. All right, I promised a working message board in the next nine minutes. So a message board is just a website where people send messages and, they dis and we display them. So we need to keep track of the messages. For now, that's just going to be an array, an empty array. Actually, let's put some messages in here. Hello world hello message two so for now we're just going to hard code some messages uh and then how do we display them well we could do something like hello the messages are and then we could replace this with like message it oops messages.join with a comma and a space. We could do that. Oh, and then we got to restart the code again. Whoops. Hello, the messages are hello world, comma, hello message too. Uh, but you can imagine if we want to actually make HTML for each of the messages, uh, you know, do anything interesting with formatting, displaying them, uh, trying to generate an HTML page with just strings gets really messy really quickly. So we are going to want a templating library. And so for that, we're going to reach for Express Handlebars. And we're just going to install it according to their own documentation. What? Where's the readme? I was just here. There was a readme here just moments ago. Weird, their NPM page broke. Anyway, express handlebars. And then we need to set up the directory structure that they call for. We'll talk about what that means in a minute. But we need a views folder, which is where our templates are gonna go. We have home.handlebars, which is our home template. We need a layouts folder which is where our layouts are going to go. And then we need a main.handlebars, which is our main layout. Go back to their documentation, copy paste. Don't worry about the contents of main.handlebars for now. Just know that most HTML pages have a lot of sort of basic structure in common. So the layout helps us not worry about copy pasting that every time. The meat of the template is the template itself, the home.handlebars. So for now, Let's go ahead and we'll copy paste what we have and see what happens. Let's put this inside of an H1 just to make it obvious what's happening. Um, and then of course we need to res.send. Well, let's uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We need to import express handlebars. And then we need to call make a couple of method calls just to set it up configure it and then we can see that they say res.render and then the name of the template so why don't we just do that for now res.render home and then in home you know let's let's get rid of this the messages are let's just say hello world from a template uh okay go ahead and start our code again we'll refresh the page You'll notice it's bold because it's inside of an H1. And uh, you'll also notice that we've got uh, a title in the tab now instead of just saying the URL that we were at because we put a title tag in the layout template. Um, so the next question is how do we get dynamic data inside of this template? Well, let's just try 
Uh, handlebars uses two curly braces to insert values. Let's just do messages. And then let's go ahead and pass in messages. Uh, this second argument to res.render is an object of stuff parameters to pass into the template. We can just say messages. And then we'll stop and start the code again. Refresh the page. Hello world from a template, hello world, comma, hello message to. So now we're rendering our messages inside of a template, and I've only got three minutes left. So let's be quick about this. Uh, we want to render our messages. We want control over how our messages render. So we're going to use a handlebars uh, called it. It's called a built-in helper called each. So a bulleted list in HTML is a UL, and then we're going to do this. Hashtag each messages. We'll render an li for each one, and the contents of the li are just going to be this, which refers to the item that's being iterated over by the each. We'll go ahead and stop and start that again. So now we should get a bulleted list of messages, which we do. Excellent. So now with our remaining 3 minutes and 44 seconds, we need to accept messages from the user and display them. So this should be pretty straightforward. We're going to first add a form to our home page. Form action equals slash message method equals post. And we need a input type equals text name equals content and we need a button type equals submit send all right so now we have this form over down here and we've got a text input and a send button so the way what that's going to do is when the user submits a form it's going to make a post request because of method equals post to the path slash message. So we need to just listen for a post request on that path. App.post slash message. Normal request response handler. And then we let's append to the messages array. Messages.push. And then what what's the value? How do we get the value out of the form? Well, it's going to be under rec.body.content because the name of the field is content. Now, this doesn't happen automatically. We need to set up a middleware to handle that for us. So let's go ahead and set that up real quick. App.use express.url encoded extended false. Uh, don't worry too much about that. Consult Express's documentation for more information on what that does. All you need to know is that parses out rec.body and makes it available. All right, and then res.redirect to the home page. So when we push, when the when the user posts to slash message, we're going to store their message and redirect them to the home page. Make sure you always respond to every request. So you always need a res.render or a res.send or a res.redirect or res.something at the end of every function. Otherwise, the app will hang indefinitely. So... Uh, I believe we have a minute left, so let's see this work. Okay. Hello, Dolly. Success! That is a message board in 15 minutes. In 14 minutes, no less. We still have a minute left. Uh, now seems like a good time to commit to git, so let's go ahead and add a dot .git ignore file. Just node underscore modules. And then we're going to get in it. There we go. So initial commit working message board. Stage all and commit. Alrighty. Uh, now, this has a fatal flaw, of course. If I start the code again, you'll notice that the messages that aren't hard coded go away. So in order for those messages to stick around uh, between restarts and for multiple, you know, longer than however long the process happens to live, uh, we're going to need a database, which we will cover in the next video. Uh, alrighty.
Thank you for joining in. There's my timer.